Hello and welcome, my leaves that finally set out on their journey. Yeah, last time Sprigatito was abducted by the team called Explorers. That's really kind of a lame villain name, but maybe they're not as villainous? That we have to see when we know what they're all about. We don't know what the pendant actually does, just that it has a Pokemon in it and it's maybe a different form or pre-evolution to Terrapagos. But well, for now we don't get these answers, but we are trying to get Sprigatito back. Will we though? Let us have a look. Episode 3. If I'm with Sprigatito, I bet. Yeah, well... They are cooking for you, they have washed your uniform, I guess she was thankful about the uniform. Not sure what she actually meant by that, but I guess cleaning it was the case. But they also kind of abducted you, so... Probably not the bad guys, but I wouldn't be too sure as of now. But now I would be more sure. Because apparently her mother hired them to be bodyguards. Question is, is that actually true or are they just making that up? And if it is true, which I think it is because there's no reason for it not to be true, why would her mother hire a bodyguard for her? What does her mother actually know? First off, the actual scene. Yeah, using a rock rough for sand stuff makes sense. It's a dog and even though you could say, well, it's a Pokemon, it doesn't have to be like a dog. Pokemon usually have the same traits as the animals they are based on, so it has a good sense of smell. Also, that is kind of canon. The other thing I want to talk about, though, is how adorable that little fist bump is. That makes this image worth it. Wait a minute. Girl I forgot the name of has a chancy. Check. Has pink hair. Check. Does medical stuff on the ship, apparently. Check. And she doesn't really want to go to the Pokemon Center herself to fetch the order she has placed, but instead sends Liko. Is she a Nurse Joy that, well, doesn't really want to be a Nurse Joy and thus is not named Joy and doesn't have the same hairdo and isn't a clone? Huh, there might be an interesting backstory here or nothing at all. Now, this question really bothers me. As Nurse Joy is preparing the order, that little girl with her Vulpix who is injured comes in. And Joy first asks if it's okay if she can treat that Vulpix first? Don't ask, don't waste any time, get that thing in the back and treat it. I know she probably does it out of friendliness, so that Liko doesn't have to wait if that's okay, but your first and foremost job is not to give out some orders of medicine, except if those medicinal orders are important because there's something going on, but this is just stocking up on things. But to help Pokemon who are injured, every second can count. Especially as that Valpix doesn't seem all that injured. But I guess that's just Pokemon. Being heavily injured means you have a little smudge of dust on your chest. Meanwhile, Sprigatito has forgotten all about her original trainer and just enjoys life. Well, I think it does want to get back to Liko, but they don't treat it badly and that's kind of cool. An evil team doesn't have to be evil in all the ways after all, right? They can still treat Pokemon well, just have evil goals or Maybe not even that evil, they could be in a grey area as well. Again, we don't know anything about the explorers, so it's hard to judge them in any direction. 
But as Brigatito loving girl here goes out to shop for some food and stuff, Rockruff actually recognizes Sprigatito's smell on her. So the chase is on. And on that chase something weird happens which I can't agree with really. Because that girl pushes that man with the berries in the basket there aside so he falls over. But why do you stop to help him? I mean, yeah, Technically, if I see that happening to someone, I would help that person. Because, why wouldn't you? Well, you wouldn't if you are in chase of somebody else. That is more important. Yeah, it can be seen as unfriendly, just ignoring it, but first off, you didn't push him over. And second, you have just way more important things to do. The life of a Pokemon is at stake here. As far as you know, you are of no knowledge that they treat it in a good way, but as far as you know, bad things could happen if you don't chase. So chase. Come on. But Friede has a plan. He wants to battle Arathio. So that if Friede wins, then, well, Sprigatito will come back. If he loses, though... Liko will get with the explorers, pendant and all. But Liko has to stand back to not be caught in the crossfire. Hmm. You could say those are dirty tactics that the heroes shouldn't use, but honestly, I don't see anything wrong with it. Also, quite honestly, if Pokemon Horizons keeps up these cool battle scenes we get, wow! This is just, it's short, but it's condensed awesomeness. It just looks cool. I love this. I mean, there's one of the coolest Pokemon in here as well. And meanwhile, while they battle, Liko gets Sprigatito back. If they fuse, would they be Sprigga Liko? Uh, no? She's not trying to steal your Sprigatito. You stole it from her. Which is not okay. I mean, true. Leafage won't do much against a flying steel type. But you are forgetting that this isn't a game but the anime. You have far more options than just defeat enemy with move. Like escaping. Yeah, Liko, gun. And you don't have anything. You kinda lost there. And while I kinda wanna see those two battled out and see who wins in the end, yeah, Frida just goes away as well because they just tricked Alethio. Which, like I said, is a bit of an underhanded tactic and... Like, in the 80s and 90s, that wouldn't be the thing the good guys would have done, usually. But I think it's fine. You had the goal of rescuing Sprigatito. And you were going through all means necessary, without hurting innocent people. So, all's fair in my book. And then, to end the episode, Liko decides to go on a journey with the Voltekas. Which is nice. They want to uncover the mysteries of that pendant, so apparently they and her mother don't know anything about it really at all. Her grandmother remains a mystery if she even is alive or whatever happened there. And well, here we are. The journey truly begins now, with Liko and Roy setting off as the title. Wait a minute, where's Roy? Ah, there he is at the end of the episode, finding the flag that the Voltekas have lost. And, well, I would have imagined they wouldn't get that back and just get a new one, because if you are on an airship and use your flag in a storm, there's no way you're gonna find that. Especially if you're above the ocean. What are the chances that it lands on the island of a main character? Oh, well, the main character part might help, though. There's a fly on my green screen. 
I wonder if that shows up. Guess we'll see after the edit. Yeah, thoughts about this episode? That was pretty good. I liked the battle scene, that looked awesome. And all in all, it was enjoyable and a good way to start off the series. Now, next time we probably get Roy's backstory here, and after that, it truly begins. But like, after four or five episodes, that's fine. You can have a setup time of that episode length. That works. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to more. And I'm starting to be really glad that Ash isn't in this anymore. So much fresh things are happening. I like that. But tell me your thoughts about this episode and Pokemon Horizons in general. Do you like it so far? Do you miss Ash? Put your thoughts down there in the comments. Let's have a discussion. And also, don't forget to escape from boredom by using a leafage on the like and subscribe button as well as that little bell to keep updated whenever I upload a new video for you. And check out the links down in the description below, leading to my Twitter, Instagram and Discord, where I post stuff, also keep you updated, all the good things, to my affiliate link for the Humble Bundle store, if you want to support me through that, I would be glad, you don't have to pay any extra, just when you buy a game via that link, it will give me some money off that purchase as well, so we both win in that case, you get a good game, I get a bit back from that nice and to my merch store where you can get stuff with Thornic on stream viewers will know who Thornic is and also to my twitch like I said I'm streaming and I'm doing that every Friday Saturday Sunday and Monday I hope to see you over there as well and until next time bye -bye.